God bless you and welcome today. It's great to see you. And uh, here we are. It feels to me like fall is in the air. Does it feel like that to you? Well, it's just me. But I'm glad you all made it and uh, everything is well with you. And uh, when we come together for worship, we know that God does want to and does bless us. And so that's a great gift for us. And so in the power of the Spirit, we're called to worship God. And thank you. Thank you for being here. Also, we have an anthem today. I haven't had one for a while. Elaine Mallory will be at the organ, and Rachel Pritchard will be our uh, vocalist. So that's something different for us today. The children's uh, message is as usual after the gospel, and I'll be looking forward to uh, talking and having a little conversation. Now, uh, <clears throat> we did have a wedding yesterday, and we had a wedding two weeks before that, and so uh, we're just uh, rich with uh, newlyweds. That's, that's so great. Now, we have our new season for fellowship and study after worship, and Dave's going to take that on. Right, David? Yes. About angels, and so, no, it's the spirit, I'm sorry. I like angels, but Holy Spirit, okay. And then also, choir resumes on Wednesday at 6.30, so things that happen for us in the season of the year are getting started. So, let's listen together to our prayer.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
vengeance with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. judged by the law of liberty. 
for judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord.
according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre, and went by way of Sidon toward the Sea of the Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man, who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Epitaph, that is, be open. And immediately his ears were open, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. And you can be seated. And I invite some of my friends uh, to come forward. that royal law, she's going to do something about that crying, right? That's what you do. You take care of You take care of one another. I do want to speak about the royal law today because it's there in James and it is Jesus' way of life for us. The royal law. Do unto others as you have them do unto you. I want to look with you, first of all, with our gospel reading. It is not 
perfectly clear immediately that the law of love or the royal law, the royal way, is right there embedded in that gospel. But it is. And I want you to take a look with me at how Jesus and the people involved are experiencing that royal law, that law of love with Jesus. So here's how it goes. <clears throat> we have the woman who tries to get to Jesus, right? He knows, she knows about his power. And if you refer back to the first lesson, we have these words about when the Savior comes, everything will be healed. Everything will be better. And so she recognizes Jesus as a healer, although she's not Jewish. But she's her. And so she takes a step in faith and is asking something that comes out of the royal law. Do for me what you would want done for you. So how does that apply to Jesus? She's asking for something that Jesus can give. And so this relationship of this love, Jesus, I know you are filled with love, and healing, although she doesn't say that exactly. But you can make my daughter well. And so the way the royal law is working there is he does that. Because that's what he would want for another person. And that's what we want for other people too. The healing, the blessing that comes from Jesus. And so in our lives, every day, we have these opportunities to do good for someone else. And we do it because we know what we would like to have is exactly what we want to give to someone else. You have the idea there how that works? There's some working relationship there, as Jesus has pointed out. This is very, very important. And uh, what happens then in that next very difficult situation for Jesus about the man who can't speak? You know, nobody can heal a person like that, supposedly. But here is the power of God, and people are asking, won't you do for him what he would want to give you, if he could? But see, we have to add a few more words to this to understand how that royal law is working with Jesus. And he's able to do the healing, because he is God incarnate. And that's what we were hearing today in the Old Testament, that when that God person comes, all of our woes, all of our concerns will be taken up in God and there will be healing. And so those two lessons work together really, really well. And we have a wonderful psalm that we, uh, that we'll be blessed and we'll be healed and we'll thank God. Well, <clears throat> you heard the reading from James. And I'm sure you heard royal law. Did you hear that in there? If you didn't, it's right in there in James. And so that's where that comes from. Although James, being a brother of Jesus, knows where it comes from because he is an intimate person with Jesus. And so he can state that as truth about the way Jesus wants us to be with one another. You see somebody hungry. Well, if I were hungry, I would want somebody to help me. So you do that. You see somebody who's in distress. And you say, well, if I were in distress, I would really like somebody to help me. And so you become that person that you identify, and you can say, that's exactly what I would need in that circumstance, and so that's what I'll give. That's what the royal law is about. You know, there's another uh, law out there that says, <clears throat> it's on the negative side, if you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you double or triple or more. Retribution. That's not what this is about. This is about putting away all of that and working in the area of love, the capacity for helping one another, the way in which life is ordered by God already, that the love of God would pass through us into other people. 
It's not magical. It's just the way God has put the world in motion. But right now, when I heard about the two children being shot and the teachers, and then I heard there was some road rage recently where people were being shot off of the interstate, I'm thinking, no, that is not right. You know that, and I know that, and we can find other examples very easily that are not according to God's way. But it's happening to us all the time. But what God is calling us to be as his people is different than that. He's calling us to be stewards of the goodness of God. Not ill will, but goodwill. Nothing that's nasty, but rather everything that is goodwill. Jesus is asking us personally today to take on that royal law as a way of living. It's our way of living. If you see something that's not right, you say, I wouldn't want that to be like that for me. You take that on, if at all possible, and you right the wrong. If you see something and you hear about something that's not going right, do something about it. Just don't sit and say, oh my goodness, this is so terrible. But try to say, take some positive action. A positive action against harm, against evil. For instance, when you see some terrible things, tragic things happening in our, even our own community, because recently there have been some very nasty things that have happened to people, you say, my God, that's not right. And you say that. And that becomes a way of marking that you do not believe that's the way we live together. And you are moving toward the royal law of saying, that is not right. And we say it. And then we try to be people who would condemn that. We try to be people who would help the people who are injured. That's what Jesus is calling his people to be. And we are his people. And he has a message for us today that is so important in our lives right now. Couldn't be more important. And so as you walk out of here today, and as you make your way down the street or whatever's next for you, notice what's happening. And be filled with that royal love for others. Love others for the sake of Jesus. And that will be you traveling on the royal road, the royal road of Jesus. Amen. We stand together as we look to the Apostles' Creed as a statement of faith. I believe in God, the Holy Spirit, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us make a good confession of our sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, so that, attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow 
into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God has mercy on you and forgives you all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, he strengthens you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keeps you in eternal life. Amen. And now as we are drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the Church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. a spirit of radical hospitality. Encourage our churches to celebrate and embrace people of diverse backgrounds, experiences, and abilities. Deepen our commitment to eucumenical and interreligious partnerships. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring forth water to nourish plants and animals in places suffering from drought. Renew our commitments to protect rivers, lakes, and streams, and make us good stewards of water in our homes and communities. Preserve wetland habitats and the creatures that make their homes there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire leaders of cities, nations, and tribes to lead with wisdom and humility. Bring peace among peoples in conflict and strengthen global commitments to nonviolent solutions. Guide all who seek refuge from war to a safe haven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort all who live with chronic illness. Surround them in your tender embrace and sustain all who provide ongoing care and support. Bring hope and healing to people struggling with addiction and nourish the spirits of all who are in recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurture in all people the gift of your creating spirit. Inspire artists and musicians woodworkers and quilters, poets and dancers. Revive those whose artistic wells have run dry and enliven all who doubt their creative talents. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you send healing and restoration. Please help us so we can tend to the needs of one another. We again are horrified with another school shooting and the deaths and all who feel helpless. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our nation to uphold justice, honor, and integrity. We are living in a particularly unsettling time. People are feeling alarmed, upset, nervous, and worried to say the least. With inter-nation tensions high, as well as domestically, we cry out to the real peacemaker, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a time of silence, we ask the Jesus to hear our words from our hearts and minds. Guide us in our daily life with you. Lord, in 
in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We entrust these and all of our prayers to you, for you are the Holy Spirit with the triune God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. And we share a sign.
this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
least. May the precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto everlasting life. Amen. Thank you.